Lesson 4.12, Word Problem Solving, Multi-Step Division Problems. We can use the strategy, draw a diagram to solve multi-step division problems. We can draw bar models to visualize the information we are given. And the bar model can help us organize the information and decide which operation to use. Here we have 100 divided by 4. Our bar model represents the 100 for the full bar, and we can break it into four equal parts. If our divisor is 4, we divide the bar into four parts, and the value of one part will equal the quotient. 100 divided by 4 is equal to 25. So remember, when we're solving word problems, one, we read and understand the problem. We make sure we know what it's asking us to find. Two, we make a plan to solve it. We choose a strategy and an operation. Are we going to use addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? Number three, we carry out our plan. And number four, we look back and check our answer. Tala baked four times as many cookies as Alicia. Together, they baked a total of 90 cookies. Alicia wants to divide the number of cookies she baked into three boxes. How many cookies will Alicia put in each of her three boxes? So we need to find the number of cookies that Alicia baked, and we need to divide it into three boxes. Our important information is that Tala baked four times what Alicia baked. There's 90 in all. There's 90 cookies altogether. And Alicia's cookies are divided evenly to three boxes. We can solve this problem using a bar model. We know we need to find Alicia's amount that she baked and that Tala is four times Alicia's. So we make one rectangle for Alicia's amount and four for Tala's because she's four times Alicia's one. Four times one is four. So we have five rectangles, five parts, so our divisor is going to be five. We know they baked 90 in all. We can do 90 divided by five. We ask ourselves, how many times can five fit into 90? Five can fit into nine one time. We put a one above the nine, and five times one is five, and we subtract that five. We get four. Now it's the zero's turn to come down, and we ask ourselves how many times 5 can fit into 40. 5 times 8 is 40. We put an 8 in our quotient, and 5 times 8 is 40, so that's what we subtract. We get a zero. We know that Alicia baked 18 cookies. And she needs to divide them into three boxes. We can make a bar model representing 18 in all, and making three rectangles for the three boxes, 18 divided by 3, is equal to 6 in each box. Alicia baked 18 cookies in which she put 6 into each of 3 boxes. To check our answer, we can multiply the number of cookies in each box by the number of boxes. There were 6 in each box. She has 3 boxes. That's 18 for Alicia's cookies. That's correct. Then we can multiply the 18 that Alicia made times 5, which was the number of parts of our bar model. It's equal to 90. 18 times 5, we do 5 times 8, which is 40. We regroup the 4 and put the 0 down. 5 times 1 is 5, plus the 4 that we regrouped is 9. Our final product is the same as our dividend, so yes, it's correct. There are 23 third graders, 23 fourth graders, and 24 fifth graders going on a field trip to see how crayons are made. If there is one adult for each group of 10 children, how many adults are going on the field trip? So we need to find how many adults will go on the field trip, and we know there are 23, 23, and 24 students. There'll be one adult for every 10 students. We can solve this problem by using a bar model. We know there's 23, 23, and 24 students. We total it and get 70 students. So we model and add to find the amount of the students going on the trip. Next, we model and divide to find how many adults will go on the trip. We know there's 70 students in all, and 
we can make a bar with 10 parts because there's going to be 10 children with each adult. We get 7. 70 students divided by 10 is equal to 7 adults. We can also use the equation 23 plus 23 plus 24 in parentheses, so we add them first, divided by 10. We add these, we get 70. We do 70 divided by 10, that's 7 adults. And we can think some number times 10 is equal to 70 to help us solve it. And how many people are going on the field trip in all? There's 70 students, there's 7 adults, that's 77 people. There are six juice boxes in a package. How many packages will be needed for 36 children if each child gets two juice boxes? So we need to find how many packages of juice boxes are needed. Each of 36 students gets two juice boxes and each package has six juice boxes. We can make a bar model to visualize the information. We have 36 children, students, and they're each going to get two juice boxes so we can do 36 and 36. 36 times 2 is 72. We do 36 times 2, 2 times 6 is 12, we regroup the 1 and put the 2 down. 2 times 3 is 6, plus the 1 we regrouped is 7. So that's 72 juice boxes needed in all. And we can model and divide to find how many packages are needed for 72 juice boxes. We know there's 72 needed in all. We know there's 6 in a package. We can make a bar model and fill it with rectangles of 6 until we have 72. And we'll get 12 of them. We can divide 72 divided by 6. 72 juice boxes needed by 6 in a package. We ask ourselves how many times the 6 fits into the 7. That's one time. We put a 1 above the 7. 6 times 1 is 6, so we subtract it and get a 1. We bring the 2 down. It's its turn to come down. 6 fits into 12 two times because 6 times 2 is 12. We, get a, sub, we subtract it and get a 0 remainder. We know we need 12 packages of juice boxes. We can also think, well, six juice boxes per package, two juice boxes per child. That means six divided by two is three children per package. Three children can get juice boxes per package. Then we can do 36 children divided by the three children per package, and we get 12 packages. We can also think 36 children divided by six juice boxes per package is going to be six packages for one juice box each. But they're going to have two juice boxes each. So we can multiply this six times two for two each, and we get 12 packages. There's usually more than one way to solve a problem. It's just that some ways are more efficient and some ways are easier. Mr. Park bought three pizzas for a party. Each pizza was cut into eight slices. If each person gets two slices of pizza, how many people are at the party? So we need to find how many people are at the party. There are three pizzas with eight slices each. They each get two slices. We can do 8 times 3, or 3 times 8, and we get 24 slices. So we know there's 24 slices in all. They're each getting 2 slices. We can divide 24 divided by 2, which is 12 people. And we can use a bar model with partial quotients. We break the 24 into a 20 and a 4. 2 times 10 is 20, so we have 10. and 2 times 2 is 4, so we have a 2, and the 10 plus 2 is equal to 12. And if you don't remember how to do partial quotients, or if you missed that lesson, it's linked in the description as 4.8. Mr. Lee sold 
four dozen tomatoes divided evenly to eight customers. How many tomatoes did each customer buy? So we need to find the amount of tomatoes each customer bought. There were four dozen in all. One dozen is equal to 12. And there were eight customers. So there were four dozen. And if one dozen is 12, that means there were 48 tomatoes. Using partial quotients, we can break the 48 into a 40 plus 8. 8 goes into 40 five times because 8 times 5 is 40, and 8 goes into 8 one time because 8 times 1 is 8. We add our partial quotients, 5 plus 1, that's equal to 6 tomatoes each. Each customer got 6 tomatoes. So just remember when you're doing word problems, it might help for you to solve it by drawing a diagram or a quick picture or by using bar models. We're finished with chapter four, we're moving on to chapter five, and we're going to learn about factors, multiples, and number patterns. I'm proud of you for watching math videos on YouTube. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.